Hello and welcome to our new Moon Mail class. I'm Lizzie Lassiter. Today we are doing a class that is called Free Your Spine and Your Pelvis. Free Your Pelvis and Your Spine. So we're working with the book Yoga Myths. And today we have the great good fortune having the author of Yoga Myths here with us, teaching us. Dun, 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 dun. Hi, mom. Hi. Judith, Hi, everyone. Judith Hansen Lassiter is here talking to us about the relationship between the pelvis and the spine. So we're going to do an asana practice. Yes. Mom will lead us a little theory at the beginning, beginning, just maybe 10 minutes conceptually. And then we're going to move to the mat. We're going to embody and feel and experience how our asana, the comfort level and the satisfaction level of our asana practice can deepen when we understand how the vertebral column and the pelvis, the pelvis and the hip joint work together. So good. Okay. The last thing I need to tell you before we get started is this is the website, lassiter.yoga. If you're not on our new moon mail for some strange reason, please go here and subscribe to our free newsletter. The other thing is that this class ties into a self-paced course that we have available for you at lassiter.yoga and it's called Yoga Myths. So you might wanna consider getting this book, number one. Uh, as a great resource for your yoga shelf. And the course is a comprehensive video self-paced um, journey through the book chapter by chapter. Anything you want to say before we talk about today's theme? No, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> it's an experiment for us because we've never really filmed something in the same Zoom. We're usually separated. Mom's usually in San Francisco and I'm in Salzburg in this room. But now we're both in the same room. So we're baby Zoomers once again. <laughs> trying to figure it out. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Let's start with the anatomy. This is pocket anatomy, which is a resource we love. What are we looking at here and why is it important for today's class? All right. So you can see part of the vertebral column, the backbone, that we call it the spine. You can see part of that and it ends in the sacrum. If you can show that mm -hmm. the sacrum is the end of the vertebral column is balancing on that. And so that comes in at the top back. If you want to make a circle, you turn it around it. The sacrum comes in and locks in with the pelvis at the back. All right. Mm -hmm. Turn it around. Okay. And then at the bottom of the pelvis, the femoral heads, Okay. So, so, and this here. is the hip joint right mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. So it, there's a direct kin kinesthetic, uh, kinetic chain, actually kinetic chain between the vertebral column and the pelvis, the pelvis and the hip joint. So those three things, if you think of those three things and the major point now that we're going to focus on only this one thing in in the asana practice is that we want whenever we move whatever kind of pose we're going we do and we're going to do a, a variety of types of poses is we want to move the pelvis and the vertebral column together okay so what you're saying if i understand correctly is that the pelvis the this big bony ring we're familiar with and the spine we're not thinking of them today as two separate units in the body but we're kind of uh honoring their connection here through the sacrum, moving the pelvis and the spine together. And perhaps that means I'm guessing that we're going to focus more on the movement separation relationship that happens between the pelvis and the leg, the upper thigh. Yes. Leg. And you already know this. Okay. You already know this. Because? Because of the first pose we're going to start with, which is standing forward bend, Uttanasana, you know, you know that movement, but unfortunately, sometimes we don't carry that through the standing poses, the back bends and the twists. We somehow have the idea that the, that the pelvis should move with the femurs and not with the vertebral column. And I'm trying to convince you otherwise. Okay. So to the mat, to the mat, All right? Let's reframe here. And then I'm going to hop back there. Mama is here with us talking into the mic. Yes. So focusing on the mic, mama. All right. And I will move back to the mat. Mm. So you can always pop your head in mom if you need to emphasize something for people. All right. There she is. <laughs> Oops. My lost my head. Good, good, good. All right. So practice with us now with an open mind. Um, so again, 
the pelvis needs to go with the column for maximal safe and aligned movement. So let's start our practice with looking at you from the side, um, Uttanasana. Now, we all know and are taught from our very first yoga class, wait, you're ahead, go back, not to bend forward by keeping the pelvis attached to the femur. Show us what that looks like. Just keep, keep yes, yeah. That's the way our students come to us. So we quickly want to teach them that the movement occurs, if you would put your hands right where the hip joints are. Yeah, just like this, yeah, mm -hmm. right there. That the the movement is healthier and more satisfying too, and more more enjoyable when when we move from the hip joints and the pelvis is the initiator of the movement. So the pelvis tips forward. This is basically the theory of this entire class. And I hope that it becomes a theory of your entire life and your movements outside of asana practice. Whenever you move from the pelvis, it, it has an integrated feeling and your sacroiliac and your joint where the sacrum and the ilium come together, the pelvis come together and the lower back are going to feel better. It's going to affect your whole life. This is a life-changing moment. And up you come. So let's let's go to Trikonasana. Triangle pose taught in almost every yoga class in the world. Probably been taught trillions of times. So she's gonna turn her front foot out, arms open, here we go. Back foot, toes are turned in. And with an inhalation, I want you to hold your pelvis still and then move the spine. So the pelvis is now staying back with the femurs. And that's the kind of shape you get. This is not a triangle. So let's show, now let's practice the way we want you to practice. Remembering the idea is to think that the movement initiates and continues from the pelvis first. Inhale your breath, stretch through your arms, exhale, now come from the pelvis, roll the pelvis, and the spine is receiving this movement. It's not creating it. The pelvis, which means basin, is pouring the spine out. And inhale, come up. Yeah, let's do the other, other side. <laughs> Watch this again. Turn your back heel out. Anchor your back heel into the floor. Open your arms up. Moving with the breath, inhale. Exhale, tip the pelvis first. See how she deepens in the front of her thigh. Come down. Now here's another little tidbit, just a little bit, like you put a tiny bit of salt on something or a tiny bit of pepper. Let the top, put your hand on your top pelvis, let that slightly, slightly roll forward. Look what happened to the spine. I This is the mo kind of moments I live for, go back. When I look at this pose, a part of me is holding my breath. And what, look at the shape of her up of her body between her hip and her armpit at the top. Now let's try this. Inhale your breath. Exhale. Put your hand on your hip if you would so we can see this. And exhale and just a tiny bit invite that pelvis to come slightly forward. You see how the entire spine lets go? How's that feel? And your arm comes up. Looking straight ahead. Inhale the breath. Exhaling. Rotate your lower ribs up toward the ceiling. Not your head so much. Mm -hmm. That is lovely. That's exactly what I want you to do. Up you come. Now we'll turn to the first side and we'll take we'll take rotated or twisted trikonasana, parvita trikonasana. Now what what do you have to tell us about your foot placement, Lizzie? What you like about the foot? wider? Yeah. Lizzie wants it wider. I, I suggest that you may not necessarily want to stand with your front heel in line with your back heel, but that you 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 make it wider. So her her front foot is back toward the windows and her uh, her front foot is toward the windows and her back foot is more toward the camera. So until you feel stable and, and grounded because stability first, if we have stability, then movement can be specific. If we're not stable, then the movement is confused. So the first practice in yoga is to be rooted into the moment, into ourselves, into our body, 
now and then the standing poses is to find that rootedness, that connectedness in the legs. So we're gonna break this pose down into two and put your hands on your top thighs, inhale the breath, drop your chin and imagine Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Exhale, come forward. Now put your left hand on, on the block or the floor and not flat, but up on the fingertips. All right, straighten that elbow. Now inhale the breath, exhale the breath. Now inhale, draw your right elbow, bend it and draw it up and back and twist the body. Now look what's happening to the pelvis. It is, it is dropping down on, on her left side. But what I'd like you to do, Lizzie, is to slightly bring your left pelvis back. Is your, oh, no, no, you're over twisting it. There. There you go. Now in the middle of your back, twist from the middle of your back. So bring that hand down. Take a, stay there for a moment and come up just like you come up from Uttanasana, drop the chin. I wanna show you though, I want Lizzie to show you what I often see people do that is not following this idea of the pelvis and the spine moving together. That's what she just showed you. I want her to come forward now and exhale, drop the chin, keep the legs straight, fingers down, come up a little bit. See if you can make your sacrum just flat, parallel to the floor. Now hold it there and try to twist. You can't twist because now she's holding the pelvis back with the leg and the pelvis, again, the pelvis moves with the vertebral column. It, it's the, it's the, root of the entire column. So inhale the breath, exhale, and let your pelvis move just horizontally forward. Take your left hip slightly back. There you go. Now inhale the breath. Think of your diaphragm, exhale, and spin the diaphragm to open the back. How is that? Take your, your right arm down, inhale the breath, and come up. Let's try the second side. Please. Luckily, we only have two, two legs, so good. We'll get another view. I like that. Turn your front toes out a little bit. Inhale the breath. Exhale down you come. Drop the chin. See if you can just stay with the sensation of this moment. Not so excited about where you might get or where you might go, but just resonating with this feeling of this of the body now. So if you come up on the block or your fingers, it gives you more space Inhale the breath. Now exhale, draw your left elbow up toward the ceiling. All right, now what we wanna see is the outside of your front hip moving backward more. Yes. How does that feel? Mm -hmm. Take your right pelvis horizontally forward. Yes. Now see how the abdomen is free, the breath is free, the body is elongating externally rotate, but without moving your foot, externally rotate your front top thigh. Exactly. See how the abdomen opens? Take the arm down, inhale up you come. So what do you have to say about that, Lizzie? What is your experience? It felt so twisted in the organs. In the organs, and for me, there's like this spot in my mid thoracic that's always super tight, and that felt um, so we can see your cute face. Then that spot in my mid thoracic felt like it was getting some opening, right? So it felt like you were twisting and elongating. Like, remember those slinkies? Yeah, like it felt like a slinky. Yes. So it was more challenging to your rotators on the side hips. It was more challenging to your hamstrings. You can always take yourself up a little bit, but it was following this understanding, this, this awareness that the pelvis creates the movement, not the vertebral column. I really believe that in asana, the vertebral column receives the movement always, never creates it. So let's try again. the next pose. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. Virabhadrasana one. Okay. Try to get to you. 
So in this pose, you need to turn in your back foot turn, toes turn almost all the way forward like you're doing it and separate your feet, not just long ways from front to back, but to the side of your mat so you feel stable on your pelvis. All right, now, please listen with an open mind and an open heart. I think of Virabhadrasana 1 as a back bend. And so when that happens, the pelvis, put your hands on your pelvic rim, it's going to tip forward. So your pubic bone goes where, Lizzie? Down or up? Down. Show us what happens when you tuck your tailbone in that position. You lose the back leg and it bends. And it feels, in Sanskrit, the word is yucky. So now take a natural stance. The asana is definitely a stylized form, an archetypal form, but it also follows, I think, the natural wisdom of the body. And we need to learn in asana when to say to the body more, or a little more here, a little less there, and when we need to let the body say, this is where I want to be. And that dance is the dance of awareness in, in asana. Take your arms over your head, inhale the breath. Now, when you bend your knee, wait, wait, when you bend your knee, imagine you're lengthening from your inner right thigh to your inner right knee, your forward leg. Lengthen the inner thigh, exhaling, bend the knee, and the pelvis tips forward. Stretch your shoulder blades up. Put your palms together if you wish. And if it feels comfortable to you, bring your arms a little bit forward, not that much, and let your head go back and your breastbone go up. Drop your head back, eyes on the lower lids, breathing. It's a beautiful back bend. Inhale, up you come. How was that? Woo. I hope that you get the feeling, all of you, that you dynamically moving in all directions when you do that. Out through the legs, up through the chest and arms. All right, let's look at it from this side now. Second side, left leg forward. Again, making your feet toward the sides of your mat to a position that feels stable for you. Don't be afraid to be a little further apart. Inhale the breath. Exhale, bend the knee from the along the inner seam of her leg. She's lengthening. There we go. And the knee stays over the foot. Now the pelvis naturally, its natural intelligence is to tip forward. Take the arms up. All right. Now your brain down. Ah. Push the palms together. Lift the chest. Drop the head. Eyes don't look up. They look in. Lift the breastbone. Breathe a couple breaths. Press the back foot as you come up. Was that joyful? Mm. Good. All right. Now I'd like you in preparation for our next group of poses to do a cat cow. And again, guess what part of the body we're focusing on? Pelvis. The pelvis it is. So come to what you feel is a neutral position, Lizzie. So if you could smooth the tucking of the shirt in, in the back, is, yeah, in the back would be good. Okay, now, there's a little bit of an arch in her lower back. Ah. So I want you to do a cat first which is rounding up. Now you're in flexion. Now in this position, pay, slow this down and notice that the pelvis is now going with the legs. Yes, do you feel what I mean by that? It's as if the pelvis is gonna slide off toward the legs. But now come slowly into the opposite position. The pubic bone goes down almost between the legs. The pelvis tips forward. That's a back bend. Yes? Yeah. So now the pelvis is going with the spine away from the legs. Show us one slowly again, that movement. The pelvis now, it's, you feel like you're really down. Your pelvis is moving down onto your legs, which feels really good in this moment. But if we're doing a back bend, we must take the pelvis with the legs. I'm sorry, with the spine. In a back bend, we take the pelvis with the spine. Show us that slowly. So the pubic bone is dropping down and the whole spine and naturally the head back bends. So your tailbone is up, her head is up. This is extension, we call it, anatomic term, anatomical term. All right, so let's try Cobra. Do you need a blanket? 
All right. So I, I want, I'm glad you're all lying down so you won't fall down from shock when I say the following thing. When we do a back bend, there is no tucking. If you would put your arms down so the elbows aren't. So if you tuck in this position, that you flattens the back. That's flexion. That takes you out of a back bend. We're going into the back bend. It does not protect the lower back. It confuses this. I think it confuses the spinal column, the vertebral column, when we try to tuck from the lower body and arch from the upper body, because the whole vertebral column is a kinetic chain and it wants to it wants to move together. So when you do your cobra, I want you to imagine your pubic bone going down between your legs, just like you felt it, and your tailbone going up. No tucking. Separate your legs, everyone. Is as wide as you want them and make uh, place your legs so that your kneecaps look at each other and the heels drop out like Lizzie's showing. All right, place the arms under the shoulders and the, before you even move, inhale the breath. Exhale and draw your shoulder blades down your back. Yes, and then up you come. Rise up from the chest. Think of the tailbone as coming up and the arch, so the arch is even, no tucking. How does it feel in your lower back? Take a couple breaths and come down. Any reflections, Lizzie? Yeah, there's no pinch in the lower back when I do it with the legs wider and think about completely back bending the entire column. So let's do it again. I'm going to add one more idea. Move the shoulder blades down the back. Inhale, exhale, up you come. Now imagine you're pulling yourself slightly forward and lifting up and out. Yeah. Like a snake, like a cobra coming up. Mm. So the, so the uh, positioning is up. Yes, and down you come. So now bend your knees. Dhanurasana. But here's a suggestion. Instead of thinking this as back bending, think of it as your knees and your shoulders moving straight up. Inhale the breath. Exhale, go straight up from knees and shoulders. Oh, very nice. Look at the arch in the back. See how the tailbone is coming up? You cannot do this pose if you tuck the tailbone. Fly up from the tailbone. Fly up, yes, and come down. Mm. How was that? How did that feel? Take a breath. Take a breath. I think this pose is not taught enough. I think because one of the things I really like about this pose is you can't tuck your tailbone and do it. And you really feel what it's like for the pelvis to stay connected to the spine and the legs to move out and away. Here we go. When you're ready, relax your feet. Inhale. Which way are you going? Not back, but what? Uh -huh. Fly up. Let the head naturally come up as it does. Fly up, fly up, fly up, and come down. Did you like that pose? Yes. When? Why do I ask that question? Because if your student likes the pose, if you like the pose, you're more li likely to do it. All right, so we now, uh, now we're going to do it with a bolster. And you're sitting on. Can you try that one? Yeah. So the the hip bones are on an activity forward, huh? Yeah. This one is contraindicated during pregnancy for obvious reasons. You're lying on your ribs. This is kind of fun. Maybe don't give this to your for, uh, first class beginners. Now imagine the shin bones going up to the ceiling. Mm, breathing. Look at the beautiful arch in the back. And the legs are flying away from the pelvis and down you come. Take a rest a moment. Look how she's lying. So her pelvis, Lizzie, you explain a little bit where your pelvis is in relationship to the bolster. So I've located my front hip points, which are the 
A-S-I-S, anatomy nerding. And that it's kind of like finding the place where that tips forward. You have to see it's kind of a center of gravity thing. So finding a place where it's kind of right on the edge and then it tips you forward and it actually helps your legs fly up. Okay, show us what doesn't work. Sometimes that's fun to see. Which is? Put your fingertips on your hip bones. Don't be, don't place the hip bones forward. Keep them too far back. See, that's not it. That's not it. You have to take your hip bones forward. Show us where, where it works better for you. Yes, way forward. And then fly up. You almost feel like your feet are going to go over your head. This also, if you if you could look at it upside down, you would see that it's camel pose. <laughs> it's lying camel. Then you come. All right. Take a breath. How does your vertebral column feel? Long and open and free and mobile? All right. So often we follow a back bend with a twist. So show us, sit in Janushirshasana, Janushirshasana. I think that bolster worked well for you. I'm gonna just take a blanket and fold it underneath and I'm gonna sit on this corner, 45 degree, which feels really good for me to kind of just helps me tip my pelvis forward. Why, Lucy, do we want to move, tip the pelvis forward? Well, I've discovered that it just feels good. <laughs> but according to the theory of this class that we're all practicing together, it's about keeping the pelvis and the spine together, like they're married, as opposed to if I don't use the support, then what can happen even though I'm reasonably flexible, but what can happen for me is my pelvis tilts back. Yes. And then I'm trying to move the spine forward into the forward bend or twist the spine. And I don't have a, a, as con much congruence or connection between the pelvis and the spine. Also, if you just sit for a moment, if you do it that way, the way we don't want you to do it that she was just showing in which the pelvis moves toward the legs and she rolls back and then the spine tries to go ahead. You put tremendous pressure on your lumbar discs hundreds of pounds of pressure more on your lumbar disc, lumbar disc in between the vertebral column. This is, this is not a good idea. So here we go. So the book itself is called, and the course itself is called Yoga Myths. And in this case, I think where in twistings, especially people get hung up is they, many people practice by anchoring the pelvis. And I want to show you in twisting that it's it, that's not the anchor. The pelvis goes with the column, just like we've been doing in every pose so far. And I'm, I'm really confident that you're gonna find not only do you twist further, which the ego likes, but you feel better in it. You feel deeper results and you enjoy the feeling of the twist. When you move from the pelvis, over the hip joints and the, it's almost like the pelvis is the last vertebra. It's not a vertebra, please don't misunderstand, but it's it's the origin of the spine is the pelvis. That's how I want you to think about it. So, you know, I think we I don't should need the, the other. Yeah, I don't need the support for the twist because I'm coming back this way. But I want you to go the other way and show the back first. Okay, so right leg straight, left leg bent. Yeah. Now see, her pelvis actually lifts off the floor. And where is the anchor? Because every asana needs an anchor. It is the straight leg. So the straight leg, she pushes the ball of the foot like you're pushing on the gas. She lengthens that leg, almost as if someone had caught her ankle and was pulling away from her. And then the pelvis jumps up and over and turns. Exhale, now lift the breastbone, walk back a little bit, inhale the breath, exhale. And just like Parvita Trikonasana, Turn your diaphragm. Yes. You can see the wrinkles in the shirt, how it shows that she's turning. Now, in that stick, come out. Now, show us without lifting the pelvis. That's not a twist. That's just yucky. There's no twist. You feel any twist. Show us the way you just did it one more time before we see the others. So the pelvis lifts. 
because yes, I know that people are always taught to hold the sitting bone still, but that will disallow, disallow the twisting. Try the, let's see the other side now. Normally we start with the right side first, so forgive us, but you can't so see. So there's actually a lift here. There's space between my sitting bone. My sitting bone lifts up. You can see this movement up and right. Exhale here. as you go. Now, may I suggest you move your pubic bone like you did in when we did cat cow, move it down toward the floor. Yes, now twist even. Yeah. Walk your hand back and out a little bit. Inhale. Try not to lead from the head. The head always wants to lead. Leave, ah, yes, lengthening through the straight leg and come back. Now, stand up. And we're going to do something interesting. We started with a forward bend, Uttanasana, separate your feet. Make sure the outsides of your feet, the little toe side are parallel to the mat. Stand there for a moment, feel your body, see what residue has been left by the, by the practice so far. Drop the chin a little bit and lift the base of a skull. Inhale the breath. Exhale, just let the arms go down, come down in Uttanasana. And fold the elbows if you wish. If you don't stop the forward movement. Now bring your pelvis just a little bit forward so your legs are more vertical, if you can. That's, that's good. Release the base of your skull completely so it hangs. And inhaling, come up. First of all, did you enjoy that? Yes. And was it different, and if so, how, from the first one? It felt... Um looser i would say it felt um warmer uh longer more like a relief than like doing yoga was there a sense lizzie that your whole body every cell was in in uttanasana not just your hamstrings yeah and there was much more release from the the entire vertebral column and then including the back of the neck. So turn around for a second. Can you hold the ponytail up? No, just, it was good. Just hold it up. So the base of the skull is, you can find it on yourself, right? Right at where it started gets, this whole area needs to lengthen, lengthen. So most people, they do forward bends. Can we, we're going to look at it one more time. Thank you. Most people lead from the chin. Would you show us that? Oops. I was already moving towards Shavasana mode. That's 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 coming. So drop the chin. Inhale the breath. Exhale. Down you come. Eyes soft, tongue soft. Now lift your head up just a tiny bit. That's what people do in a back bend. No, in I a mean forward. in a forward bend. They kind of do that. Yeah. They do that. So when you do that, there's tension in your neck, tension in your face, tension in your jaw, tension in your tongue. Yes. Now let the base of your of your skull just lengthen down. Now what's happening in your tongue? Yeah, it's flat, it's broad. And your brain, flat. Now I don't, I know you can put your hands on your foot on the floor, many of you. The average person of 30 can't touch the floor in a forward bend. So you're not average. That's always good. We never no one, the ego never wants to be average. But when you put your hands like that, there's a certain stopping of the energy. So see if you can fold the elbows and what you think. That's really giving yourself the pose. Inhale up you come. So I, I'd like to just teach you now, now that you're more embodied, I'd like you to teach you Tadasana, just stand as you are. And I want you to notice what happens if you just shift your weight slightly too much to the right side, slightly, not even, yeah. What happens in your jaw? What happens in your tongue? Tension, yes or no? Now lift your chin up and you get more tension in your jaw. Come back, drop the chin, lift from the back of the skull, rise up from the back of the skull, come back to the center, weight. 
Now the tongue relaxes and the jaw relaxes and the brain, the brain is exhaling. Now shift a little bit too much the other way, just a tiny bit. And immediately you have tension in your jaw and your tongue. And the tongue is so intimately connected with thinking and the and forming words and analyzing. So if we stand in the center of our being, we enter, we discover, let's say it that way, we discover an innate silence that's bigger than the brain. Above thinking, we hear the present moment, we taste the present moment, we feel the present moment. There is no anxiety. There is no, or minimal agitation. Namaste, thank you. Lizzie's gonna teach you a simple Shavasana now. Yeah, thank you so much. What I noticed that I found interesting was that when I shifted my weight to the right or the left, I felt a tension, pelvic floor, diaphragm, tongue. All three of yes. those places got gripped. Yes. And then when I went back to the center, even though I was vertical in Tadasana, there was a quality of Shavasana in Tadasana. Who knew? I'm very much about the tongue now and the and the base of the back of the skull, just like lifting it up. Mm. So let's just try right, right where we're sitting, just for fun. Slightly lift the base of the skull. Now turn your head from the back. Think of the back of your skull as you turn to one side. But what we do is we drop the base of the skull and then we turn from the face. So if you lengthen up and then you turn. There's more dignity somehow. Yeah, there is. There's more presence. Okay. Okay, here's my idea for Shavasana. We didn't talk about this before. Mm. What I'm going to show a setup. And it'll just be me on the screen. We'll say goodbye now. And mom will talk us into Shavasana. But what I suggest you do is right now, set a timer on your phone. Make sure it's on airplane mode. Set a timer. Give yourself something generous. 10, 15, 20 minutes. 20. And you, depending on the realistic, what's going on in your day. But you're going to end at your own moment with Shavasana. So what we're going to do is show the setup mom will talk us into the pose and then the recording will end as i'm in the pose it's like we're gonna creep away and leave you in shavasana good idea excellent idea all right let me give the website one more time lassiter.yoga l-a-s-a-t-e-r.yoga this is where you want to go to sign up for our new moon mail if you're not already on it and to consider joining our Yoga Myths course, which is really, it's very similar work to what we did today. It's, it's sort of demystifying, dismantling many of the inherited ideas, the received wisdom that doesn't actually make anatomical sense, doesn't match anatomical reality. And so it's a way to make the practice more authentic to the bodies that we find ourselves in. At this moment. Because when we, when we work with our own alignment, we have the natural curves, we move from the pelvis, uh, there is, we discover an inherent ease in the pose. That is, we can still feel the work of it, we can still perhaps, and feel the stretch of it, but, but beyond that, bigger than that, or deeper than that, there's a sense of ease, a spontaneous arising of ease in this location. And the definition of asana, verse 46, chapter two, Patanjali Yoga Sutra, abiding in ease is asana. So what it's teaching us is to become the ease that we crave. I'm ready. Let me adjust the camera and I'll tell you about our shavasana. We're doing an extremely simple variation today. The idea is to support the knees in a open, loose Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees open, belly soft. We're going to be on the center of the sacrum, continuing that theme of our interest in the pelvis. And the spine will be long. We're going to support the head, neck, and shoulders with a pillow. I'm going to put two pillows under my wrists because my floor is cold. 
So you may want to do that, or you can spread out a big cozy blanket or rug underneath you for the practice. Cover yourself up for warmth, cover up your eyes for darkness. Spend a few minutes in preparation to reap the deep benefits of this pose. Deep benefits of Shavasana sounds so ominous and wonderful. Okay, hello, where are you, hello? Here, I'm gonna use this for my head, neck and shoulders which want to be supported really well. And then I'm gonna take these two up. These two pillows, symmetrical little couch pillows to support my wrists. And what I, the reason I like this variation is that it doesn't require a ton of props. So I'm supporting the legs with just a single bolster. Now I have one of my third eye masks. This is a product placement. You can find these on my website at lizzy.yoga. So nice. Make sure it does not cover the nostrils. We want to breathe. Okay, so I'm going to sit here and then adjust my support so that the knees are really supported, the feet are loosely together. Put on socks, if that makes sense, where you are in the world. So now you might want to start your timer. 10, 15, 20 minutes. 20. 20 is the magic number. So I'm going to leave you in Shavasana, Lizzie. And then when you're there, what am I doing? Leaving you. You're going to come out on your own. All day long, we have the belief we're in charge. And we are in some ways. We're, we're going, we're coming, we're moving, we're working, we're thinking, we're acting, we're doing. And this is a, such a precious moment in our day when all we do is become aware of being. And it's it sounds very abstract, but it's not. Notice your jaw. Now just feel your hands from the inside. Be aware of your hands from the inside. There begins to be expressed through you now a natural stillness, not a contrived one. You're not busy being still. You just are stillness. Let go from the deep belly. Sometimes you might even be able to feel a faint heartbeat of energy and warmth in your belly. From the inside, experience the space in your pelvis. The breath now is so gentle. The most powerful connection we have with life, our life, the life. Gentleness of breaths. There is no fear in this spacious stillness. You are now the container as you always have been, but now most notably, deliberately, 
feel the connection with that still consciousness. The boundaries of the body are softened. Nothing holds you apart from this present moment, from the place where you are. from the softness and ease that is your birthright. Shavasana.